Hi everybody, welcome back to Nita Keeping It Raw and I'm going to start out with a word of prayer and then I'm going to jump right into it. In a hot second. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, thank you for giving me your divine guidance and showing me a sense of direction when all things have failed me thus far in what I'm going to speak on today. Yahweh, in your son Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I want to share something with you all. I told you about the removal, the uh, accusation that I had uh, breast cancer. And uh, six months afterwards, they said that there was a error. So, uh, just listen to this. This is a letter that I had written to the Supreme Court. And I mailed it out uh, a few weeks ago. Because I can't, This it just doesn't resonate for me to it's just not working for me to let this just go. You can't just take a body part of mine and tell me it was nothing wrong with me and you screw me around and then you turn around and get screwed around by the justice system. I just can't do it. So this is my letter and I'm gonna be like taking names in and out, you know, so I won't put that name out or blah, 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 blah. Uh, as a citizen, this is the letter as follows. Supreme Court of the United States of America. As a citizen of the United States, I, me, have a major issue with the health and providers, with the health providers and the attorney firm that did not do right by me. I got the hospital's name and the law firm. Esquire, downtown Detroit. In a short, brief summary of this concern, I went for my annual mammogram in early 2016. I went to a diagnostic place. They saw something. I went to get a second opinion at a hospital. Uh, Dr. Erica they saw something and suggested a biopsy. Being they were the professionals, I trusted them. Then I was told I had breast cancer. I was also convinced, listen to this, I was also convinced if I did not get my breast removed, I would die. So, on June the 8th, 2016, a woman in the prime of her life with one breast, the new me. Unfortunately for me, six months later, I had an appointment with an oncologist at the hospital, uh, Dr. Devin. Dr. Devin asked me to come to the examination room and as he began to check the skin where the draining tube was uh, and that area where my breast used to be he informed me that I had contracted uh, a virus from the operating room and was asking me had I had broken out with sores or boils. Not as, not as if I hadn't been through enough, now this. So, doctor began going through my medical chart. He paused and he paused again. 
He said, I'm trying to figure out why they removed your breast. He said, to me, your number is number nine. And I asked him, what do you mean by that? He said, cancer starts at number 10. He said, you had nothing in the lymph nodes. You needed no chemo or radiation. I freaked out. He asked me to try and calm down. Go have a seat. This is the doctor, the oncologist. Go have a seat in the lobby and I'll call you back and we'll talk about it more. So I said, okay, shortly, shortly, I'm sorry guys, after he sent me to the lobby, he sent his nurse practitioner out to tell me that he could no longer speak to me on this matter because he could not jeopardize his fucking job. I didn't put this in a letter to the Supreme Court, but I'm on need of keeping it raw. I went crazy. That's in the letter. I went crazy. In the lobby. My breast is gone. I never had cancer. And the oncologist could selfishly only be concerned about his job. So I began to do two things. Look for a shrink and a lawyer. I contacted Medicare, listen to this, to report fraud against the hospital for using me as a cash cow profit. While searching for an attorney, I kept running into walls until I found an Esquire attorney who took the case. I was given a contract to sign and was told if I decided to drop him and get another attorney firm, I would have to pay both firms out of my settlement. So I stayed with Esquire attorney. I'm not using their names. The law in Michigan, medical malpractice is two years. No room for errors. I call the law office to see how my case was developing. They lost my medical records. They didn't want to tell me. I knew this was a time sensitive matter. The law firm lost my records in California when they should have been in Arizona with the expert doctor. A few months, they contacted me and dropped the case after using most of my statute of limitation time with no reason. So this leads me to believe that they got paid, this Esquire in the Penobscot building downtown, they got paid not to represent me by the hospital who used me as a cash cow. So, I contacted my local news station, Fox 2, here in Michigan. Spoke with Taryn Asher to exercise my First Amendment right. I have it on voicemail on my phone right now. 
her voice, her message. She said, I want to do a story on you. I was so relieved and happy because how many women have they did this way? Three weeks later, she changed her mind to do the story. Or who made her change her mind? This is in the letter. So, this is why I am compelled to write to the United States Supreme Court and make the leaders of this country aware of what has and is being done to women for monetary gain. I have every record even one year after the removal of my breasts, I went to Carmano's Cancer Institute. They gave me the most devastating news. I, they took the liberty of looking at the imaging, the 3D imaging of the breasts that the other hospital claimed that had cancer in it. Carmano's Institute said it was breast milk and a calcified cyst. And I cried. And I'm still crying today. This is Nita, keeping it raw. Isaiah 54 and 17, and I gotta use the scripture, says that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rise against me in judgment shall be condemned. And everybody that was in that hospital operating room that touched my body God is going to rake them across the coal. They use me for a cash cow. They're dirty and they low down. This is Nita keeping it raw. Peace. That's all I can say. Because I don't have any. I'm mad as hell.